All right, so welcome. This is additional material for the lecture that we had last week about basics of intents and passing parameters through intents and basic UI elements. So during the class, we had some uh, technical difficulties related to um, using the ID. So I decided to uh, comment on some of the developments that I've done um, outside of the class. If you go to the main uh, course wiki or course project, apart from the wiki, we have also a, re a repository. And inside the repository, uh, there is a folder called labs. And then inside labs, we will have uh, a number of examples for you to check. And the basic example is the one that we were working in the class uh, related to simple activities and passing parameters between activities. So if I open it up, uh, there is a basic uh, readme um, markdown file, and I wrote down a specification of what we want to achieve. Um, we want to have a couple of activities and some fragments to play with the UI and with the interaction between activities and fragments. So we start with the main activity. It will have a simple view with two buttons, a cancel button, which basically quits and goes to the home screen, and then a functional button, which will lead us to the next activity. The next next activity will be called name question activity, and this one will ask a user for his or her name. Uh, very simple uh, <clears throat> interaction. And from this activity, we want to render kind of a hello world type of um, functionality using two fragments. So this activity will launch a third activity called greeting activity. And this activity will have two simple modes, uh, two modes, one simple and one advanced. Um, from name activity to greeting activity, we will get through a greet button. And we want the name activity to have uh, edit text uh, field that the user can enter their names, their name. Um, <clears throat> The greeting activity will have um, two fragments and a user can navigate between a simple and advanced view. Um, the best for me is to effectively show you how the app looks like before we get to the code. So if I uh, go to, so I go to my app, um, let's go to the, main let's go to all right so i need to launch it from the yes. i have difficulty managing my mouse to launch the activity so basic activity. So the main activity has a simple view with a text view label and two buttons. A cancel button quits the app, so I can do that, and goes back to the home screen. Uh, the greet me button goes to the um, name question activity, which asks a user for the name. And then I can cancel this activity or go to the greeting activity. Um, there are some additional constraints. So here we said that because the name is provided by the user, we have to have some sanitation and some uh, validation of the user input. So what we want is if the user enters white space followed by a name and a weird uh, case system, followed by white space, oops, Uh, followed by another token, followed by another token. We want the sanitation to strip the first token, uh, so clean the white space on both sides, remove all the additional tokens, and use the first token as a username, and capitalize the first, fa first letter, and then lowercase everything else. So if I uh, use that string, 
it will say hello Marius. And if I use advanced mode, it says hello Marius. So all the white space here is stripped. All the trading things are stripped and the name is capitalized and the rest of the name is simple case. So this is the name entry, name question activity. And then this one is the greeting activity and it has two, two views. So the simple view where all the elements are in the top and the buttons are next to it. It uses a linear layout with the horizontal um, buttons and uh, vertical uh, labels plus this button. Uh, and then we can switch to the more advanced one. And it has kind of a nicer label, text in the middle and buttons at the bottom. Um, so I can go back to the simple view if I want to and cancel this greeting activity and go back to the kind of a name question activity. And then if we change this to, uh, for example, Joe Doe um, and greet Joe again, we will see the Joe text kind of here and then advanced. So as for the specification, we kind of build the app following the specification um, and introduce the fragments to manage the um, the display between the simple and the advanced kind of uh, perspectives. So this is the single activity which has two views uh, and it's not cleaned when I change the view. The activity kind of runs behind, whereas when I go transition between this activity and the next activity, uh, this activity kind of gets onto the stack. So this is um, the basic functionality and we will go through the code um, and check um, what, you know, how I structure it and how I achieve this, uh, this behavior. So in addition to the functional requ requirements, we have uh, three non-functional requirements. Um, so we want the code to be clean, so to have zero warnings. Uh, we want some JUnit tests and we want some UI tests, kind of automated tests for us. So instead of clicking, we will kind of uh, automate some of the testing. So let's have a look um, into how it um, is organized. So all the tests um, under Android test, all the UI tests are here. Um, so you will notice that I have <clears throat> three classes for tests and the one which is de generated by default for every project is untouched. So I didn't change this one, but we'll talk uh, about tests in a moment. Uh, let's first look into the structure of the program. So I have um, a main activity, name question activity and greeting activities written in individual Kotlin files and individual classes. I have the simple fragment and advanced fragment classes as separate files. And I have a constants file, which um, I've placed the sanitation of the input string and some constants. Uh, th those will be accessible at the package level and I keep them outside of the, of the classes in a separate file. So the main activities, as we've discussed during the class, uh, it has basically two buttons, cancel button and um, the greet button. Um, cancel button calls finish, so it closes up the activity. And this one starts a name question activity. So it's a very simple, I'm creating a new intent and passing the name question activity literal for the class. So no magic here. So let's have a look into name question activity. Um, this one is also very simple. So handling of the cancel button is the same. Uh, we're basically finishing the activity, which means that we will go back to the main activity if someone presses cancel here. And then for the greet button, what we will do is we will read from the edit text that we have in the view, the actual value of the text and it will put it into as an extra into the intent. 
which we will use to launch the greeting activity. So then the greeting activity can read all the parameters which are put as extras into the intent and use them for rendering the, the views accordingly. Um, instead of using magic strings, I have constant for a key value pair. So this is effectively a string um, which marks the, val the, the key. And then I have also a, a string, which is the text. Um, you can use put extra for the key value pairing of parameters and the parameters can be of uh, arbitrary type. Um, this can be read in the greeting activity from the intent and used to render the text. Um, let's have a quick look into the main activity with the two buttons. So I have the, uh, the text simple intents demo app, like the label, uh, and then the two buttons, and I'm using a constraint layout. So in the design, uh, the buttons and the labels are kind of constrained by the uh, constraint system. And then in the name question activity, it's very similar. I'm also using constraint layout. And I have um, that edit text field where, where the user is using to type in the, the, the name. Uh, then we have a label for this. So as you see in the design view, the text field is here. The label is underneath it. And then I have the two buttons um, below the, um, the, the label and they are side by side. So again, I'm using the constraints to kind of lay it, lay it down. One thing to kind of note here is that uh, by default, the edit text has uh, a text, which is um, capitalized name. Uh, we could keep it empty, um, but if we keep it with a particular default text, then if the user doesn't type anything, this is the text that will be used. So if we greet this, it will basically says hello name uh, because that's the default text. So it's up to you and up to the UI designer to decide what should be the default behavior here. Um, also note that if we pass uh, the empty, um, uh, yeah, the sanitation doesn't say that, but in the code, what I did was that if the empty string is being passed, uh, no name is being used as a um, as a string. We probably should change this um, such that if there is no string here, the greet me button should be disabled. So we can have a handler uh, which checks if this field is empty or we just have white space here. And then this button will only be active if there is actual some text in the field. So you can use it as a uh, extra add-on to this application to kind of implement that behavior. All right, so we have the basics covered. We have the basic two activities sorted and we basically did that in the class as well. Um, so now we have the final greeting activity, which in our case comprises of two fragments. Um, <clears throat> so the greeting activity itself will have its own view, which we'll use as a placeholder of where to render the fragments. Um, and then we will start with the simple fragment first. And then from this one, we can navigate to the advanced fragment. Uh, so um, greetings activity will have its own view, which we also use XML to define. And that's the one which I specified. So it's a very simple frame layout, which has nothing in it, uh, which is called, uh, the idea of that layout is called fragment underscore container. So we will use it as a place placeholder for our fragments. Uh, and by default, we have nothing. So it's by default, we have just uh, empty frame layout. And then for the fragments, we can define fragment UI in code, but we can also use XML for it. So I opted for using XML and we have the simple fragment, which is this one. I'm using linear layout, which effectively lays out components in a linear fashion, either horizontal or vertical. For the top level, we use vertical. So it's one under the other. So first we have a text view, uh, which is just the description. Then we have the actual text, which we want to do use for the greeting. So this 
has a label, uh, an ID called text underscore greeting. And then we have an embedded linear layout again, and we have two buttons next to each other using a horizontal this time uh, layout. So it's a very simple uh, UI component. And then for the advanced one, it's kind of very similar. We use, um, we use linear layout as well, but this time we have a constraint layout inside it and we lay out our components uh, in a relative uh, constraint way. So then we have the description at the top, we have the greeting kind of in the middle, and then we use linear layout with the buttons in a horizontal um, um, way at the bottom of the screen. So I have kind of a two different ways of rendering the hello uh, name uh, view. And one is for the simple fragment and the other one is for the advanced one. So now if I go to the actual greetings activity, that's the most complex uh, activity that we have. And it will need to manage um, the transitions between the fragments as well as initiating the, the first fragment, the simple fragment first. So let's have a look. <coughs> this activity inherits from fragment activity because we need to have um, a reference to a support fragment manager that will allow us to instantiate the fragments in our activity. But let's start from the beginning. So the beginning is a, a standard activity. We basically inflate the activity greeting, which in our case was the simple, um, let's have a look again, frame layout, empty frame layout. So we instantiate that and then we obtain from the intent that launched this activity, we obtained this argument name, which we passed um, in the extras. So greeting text will be our text that we got from the previous activity, which was name question activity. So when the user entered that, that, that text, this text will be read in this activity and passed here. Um, then we need a mechanism to pass this string to the fragments that we will launch. So we uh, instantiated here two fragments, um, the simple fragment and the advanced fragment. We basically called the default constructors for the fragment classes. Uh, and when we create the initial um, um, instance of the activity, we populate the uh, fragment manager with the first um, with the with the simple fragment, right? So we initiate it by adding a fragment in place of the fragment container. So the add will basically make the new fragment the child of the fragment container that we have, uh, and then we commit this transaction. So we effectively instantiated the simple fragment first, and we said that we are showing the simple fragment. And then the sim simple fragment has two buttons. One is cancel, which closes the activity, and the other one is the, uh, the button which will switch to advanced mode. So we need, in this activity, we need kind of a two handlers. We need how to show the simple fragment and how to show the more, more advanced one. Uh, if we already showing the simple one, we will not, um, do anything because we're already showing it. That's why I have a kind of a Boolean flag, keeping track of what is currently shown on the screen. And if the if it is the simple fragment, then when we get request to show simple fragment, we do nothing because we're already showing it. Um, if we're not showing it, then what we will do is we will um, um, create, we will pass the arguments the, the greeting text into the simple fragment, and then we will replace whatever fragment we currently having uh, under as a child of the uh, fragment container um, with the simple fragment, and we will commit it. And then we will say that we're showing a simple fragment. If we showing the simple fragment and we get the request to show the advanced one, uh, we check if we are not already showing the advanced one, if we not, then we pass the parameter to the advanced fragment and basically replace the whatever fragment we're showing with the advanced one. 
We do one extra thing here because we want the back button when we inside the advanced um, fragment to switch to the simple view first, not to quit the activity, but to change the um, the rendering fragment that is being shown. So let me just quickly show you that. So if I go here and say, greet me, Joe Doe, it kind of goes to a simple fragment and shows me uh, the simple view. If I click on advanced view, it shows me the advanced one and the back button now will take me back to the simple one. You see? Uh, so this is exactly what we did by uh, putting the previous view onto the back stack. So it means uh, when we press the back button, we go back to the, from the advanced one, we go back to the simple one. So this is effectively uh, all functionality that we need. Plus we have the, um, the logic of how to extract the text from the text view, the first token, uh, how to um, put it to lowercase and how to change the first character into the uppercase. Um, and also we have the prefix. So we're using hello, pff, the name. Um, so this is the additional method that we're using for uh, generating the final um, behavior of the app. So it all is nice um, and we can test it. So as I was clicking through this, uh, cancel quits the activity, this one quits this activity, this one quits this activity. And then if I relaunch it and use the greet me and change the name, I can uh, put again white space uh, and put Alice, but with weird um, Alice and Bob, uh, then we can see that it all works well, uh, that Alice is displayed here correctly, that the advanced goes here. If I press the back button, it goes back to simple. Uh, if I press back button here, I go back to this activity. So all the behavior kind of looks nice and I can click through it. Um, clicking through it is tedious and kind of error prone and um, it takes time. So what I did, I scripted all this clicking through and basically wrote um, UI tests. So I will move it over here, um, which do all the clicking for me. So if I run those tests, uh, Android Studio will build my, um, my application and launch the uh, testing framework, instrumented testing framework and it will uh, basically do all the clicking uh, for me. So now I'm running the tests. So you can see the progress of the tests. And on the uh, left hand side, you can see my app being launched. And it's not me clicking it. My mouse is here. It's this uh, script which kind of uh, keeps testing uh, and clicking the buttons and validating that the behavior is exactly as expected. Um, so I have in total 11 tests uh, and all those tests are kind of executed now and test the functionality of the app. Um, so um, I can fill in the text field. I can fill in um, um, any entries that I need. I can click on the buttons and I can validate that uh, the behavior is as expected. So this is what happened here. Um, and all the tests passed and the tests are um, written in the Android test. Um, and we have um, three classes. So we're testing the greetings activity, we're testing the main activity behavior and the name question activity. And each test is relatively simple. So let's start with main activity. Um, main activity, I have three tests and the first test basically checks if I press the hello button, I perform click on it, that I've, I am issuing an intent to the name question activity to launch the name question activity. Um, it also checks if I press this button that my activity is not destroyed and it's not finishing. So I'm basically launching a new activity, but this activity, the main activity continues to run in the background. 
And then if I press cancel, I'm checking if my main activity is destroyed and is finishing because I should call finish and I should kind of um, close everything up. So those tests are kind of here. I will not go really deep into how it is done. I'm using an Espresso framework. Uh, we will discuss tests and how to write them and how to um, like how to use them uh, in the subsequent lectures. Um, I just want to stress that there are two testing frameworks. So the one which is here uh, for with those three classes, four classes, uh, is for the UI. So it needs a, a, either phone plugged in or an emulator, and it will um, uh, test your app according to those scripts on the actual running app. And then um, there is additional um, tests that I can uh, I can write, and those will be JUnit tests. And then uh, let me just quickly check. Um, So with the, yes, yeah, so the instrumented tests are under Android tests and the JUnit tests are under tests. And here I just have one class um, and it tests the greeting activity, which effectively tests my um, uh, generate greetings uh, method. So following this specification here, I have a number of requirements uh, and for example, that should not include any tra trailing or leading white space. It should be a single token and it uses the cap capitalization. So I basically have some of the uh, functionality isolated in the individual tests. So I have a first test which checks if the name is capitalized correctly. So if I put input with capitalization, with weird different capitalizations, I expect the output to be properly capitalized. Um, first character, uppercase, and everything else lower. Then the second test checks if, if I pass kind of a white space around a token, that I get a proper trimming of the white space. And then the final test asks for weird white space, weird uh, capitalization, and additional tokens. Um, you may ask, why do I need the first two tests if the final one already tests everything? Um, well, in a sense, it would be a, a, a correct uh, complaint. Uh, the final test should only test kind of a tokenization. Uh, the other tests should only test some of the aspects. Um, the reason why we writing kind of a short specific test is to identify the potential problems. So if I only had the last test and it failed, I wouldn't know exactly what happened. Like, did it fail because of a capitalization or did it fail because of tokenization or trailing the white space? Uh, whereas with those tests, if one of them fails, I know exactly what the problem is. And then the combination of those tests kind of informs me exactly what's wrong. Um, so tests should be short, should be very specific, um, and they should give you an answer. If they don't work, you should know immediately what's wrong, like what might possibly be the reason why a given test is not working. Um, Another note here is that I don't test one thing. I'm testing one, two, three, four, five different things. And I uh, used a map to map what the input is and what the expected output is. And I used a for each iterator to check um, those assertions. So even though it looks like a single assertion, I'm actually making five assertions uh, similarly in the other tests. So if you can compact um, and script the assertions is instead of specifying them like um, explicitly, it's a good idea to kind of think of different use cases and different uh, types of uh, input output mappings and then do kind of a loop through that uh, instead of like manually doing it. The reason is that you can easily make a map of 25 different use cases in a single test and kind of go over them um, easily. So this is kind of a JUnit tests. And again, I can um, go here and run my JUnit tests. So 
same as before, Android Studio will build my um, project. And because I have three tests, it kind of uh, puts them here and I have a nice green checkboxes saying, yeah, everything looks good. Um, it's a good idea to have meaningful names. So then if one of the tests fails, you know exactly what might be the reason um, for the test to fail. Um, you should also consider writing the test before you write the actual functionality. So that's what happened here. I wrote those tests before I wrote uh, my function. Uh, and it turned out the function is quite simple, actually. Um, so it's effectively like a th three-liner. Um, and I had to go through it um, multiple times because my, my tests were failing. Uh, so I wrote it and I was thinking I'm done. But uh, first of all, I had problems with the delimiters. Uh, second, I had problems with some of the um, tokenization and extracting the tokens properly. And then finally, you will see that there is a wiggle here. Um, so initially, I had my code written like this. Um, so if I write my, my um, function like this, um, you will notice I don't have any wiggle and it's very clean and I get a kind of a nice green tick box that everything is fine and that's the way you should write your code. However, is empty um, is a utility method on strings from the Android package. And because this is a JUnit test, uh, test which checks uh, the behavior of the logic of my application, any dependency on Android is kind of explicit. So I would need to mock any calls that are done to Android APIs in order to isolate my logic from particular implementation of Android, uh, and which in this case means I would need to mock uh, is empty method. Um, and I didn't want to do that. So I was lazy and I didn't want to mock in my tests um, the um, is empty method function. So I effectively had to rewrite it in such a way that I'm not relying on any functionality from Android. Um, so in this case, I have no dependency on Android in this logic. Therefore, I don't need to mock anything. But I have kind of a wiggle says, oh, please replace the zero check, uh, zero size check with is empty. Um, you know, semantically, both calls are exactly the same. This one, yes, indeed, a bit nicer uh, than just checking for the size, but uh, for the sake of simplicity or for the sake of not mocking the um, tests, I opted for this solution. So eventually, I got all the green boxes and JUnit tests, and my uh, UI tests are working fine. All right, so let's um, wrap it up. Um, the final part that we uh, want to show here is the final things. So I already showed you JUnit tests and I showed you UI tests. Um, in order to have this in Android Studio, you need to go in here and add in configurations and press plus, pr the plus button and use the Android JUnit and Android instrumented tests. If you in you know add those two targets for you for yourself, then you will kind of notice that you have the JUnit and you basically pick that you want a single module, you pick the app, and then you have the target for running JUnit tests. And similarly for the UI tests, I kind of call them UI tests, I pick the module, my app, and you're done. So you have kind of an easy uh, access to those uh, two types of tests. Plus, you usually want to be able just to run your app in the emulator. Um, so how about the linter? Uh, that we have zero warnings in linter. Um, so in Android Studio, you get this um, kind of checks which are done here. So as you see, because of this wiggle, I don't have a kind of a green, nice green uh, checkbox here. So I have kind of a one week warning uh, and some, some typos. Uh, if I go to greetings activity, I have a kind of a nice uh, checkbox saying, okay, 
one typo, but you know, no warnings, no errors, everything is fine. So use that, use that to make sure that you have no complaints in, you know, from linting. But to properly lint your code, what you really need to do is you need to go to command line, go where your project lives, and then you will notice that there is an executable uh, batch script, which is called Gradle. Uh, and Gradle is the build system, and Gra Gradle W is a wrapper which um, launches the, the Gradle build system for you. If you say Gradle uh, tasks, you will see that the project by default has a number of uh, tasks that you can run. Um, it kind of has a lint fix for a cleanup <laughs> task. It has building tasks for building your uh, Android app, for installing it on the phone or on the emulator and so on and so forth. Um, the ones that are very useful is called check. Uh, so if you run check, it will run the linter for you and it will check if your project has all the uh, setup and all the constraints done correctly. So if I clear that and I run uh, Gradle check it will build your project and it will run um, the, the checks on all the dependencies and all the constants and everything in your project and then it will run the linter um, i get some warnings so for example i'm using a source and target versions for java which is value seven and it's obsolete i should be using probably eight or nine um, so I can change that later. It's just a warning, it's not an error. And then I have run the linter on both debug and release versions of my code base, and I have zero issues. Um, this is not strictly true. I actually have two issues in my uh, code, and those two issues are by default ignored. And for all your submissions and for all the code that we will be dealing in, I am accepting that those two issues are um, ignored. What are, what are those? Uh, let me cut. Um, so the linter constraints are in the app slash lint.xml file. Uh, and if you see it, uh, we're ignoring all the possible problems in the tests. Uh, we don't care about linting the tests. And we don't care about these two. So the first one is Google app indexing warning, which means in my manifest file, I don't have a proper indexing of the um, activities and mapping them to URLs such that Android um, uh, Google Play store can nicely show them on the website and show have kind of a clickable uh, interactions between what is browsable there and what your app actually is capable of. Um, the second one is icon missing density folder. Uh, when you're deploying for uh, Google Play, you have to generate all different densities of your um, icons and images such that the different fonts can use the resources accordingly. Because we're not publishing our apps, uh, I'm accepting that those two issues are kind of um, ignored. Uh, if I didn't put those two lines here, I would have complaints about those two issues with my project. But because I have this kind of uh, two issues ignored, then my linter doesn't complain. Uh, when I initially generated the project and typed all this code, I had about eight different linter issues and I had to fix them. Uh, so you will have to do the same. So before you submit your assignments uh, and your project, you have to make sure that you have kind of a zero linter issue policy. Um, for dealing with this, um, if I had some linter problems, um, so if I said Gradle um, lint and it had some issues, uh, it will kind of show them here uh, in the command line and it will generate a nice report for you in an HTML format, which you can open in your browser. So if you go and open, um, if you open uh, app slash build slash report slash lint and, uh, minus results dot HTML, then you will see kind of a nice um, report page 
uh, with some hints and some uh, suggestions of how to fix your linter problems. So you can do that. So I think we're done. Uh, we covered the linter and we have zero warnings. We have JUnit tests for the functionality of sanitation of the uh, user input. We have some UI tests and we have the basic functionality working uh, with passing simple parameter between the activities. Um, there is also an ability to pass the parameter back so you can launch one activity and then get some input from um, that activity back to the main activity. This will be um, as a homework in assignment one. Uh, you will you will need to you will be need, you know you will need to do that. Um, so then um, you instead of start activity you will use start activity four, uh, and then you you get kind of the results back when the subsequent activity concludes. Um, so we can discuss that in the next um, next lecture. Um, and you've learned today about using the command line and for example automating some of the tests and using uh, Gradle uh, with some of the tasks. So for example if I use uh, Gradle and say that I want to run um, all my tests um, for example this one connected Android test so it will uh, run all the instrumentation tests for all the flavors. So it will effectively do in command line uh, what my UI tests are kind of doing in Android Studio. Uh, I like to put um, a warning mode so I get all possible warnings for my um, instrumentation tests. So if I run them and I have no problems, uh, you will notice that the uh, emulator will actually launch wh while the tests are running. Uh, the emulator will launch the app again and run basically click through the same uh, clicking through the, the app as the tests we're doing in Android Studio. Um, testing various aspects and it will work well. So if there are no issues, you will conclude with the build succeeding. And then if there are some issues, the build will fail and then you will see uh, error in the console. Plus you will have an HTML generated um, report uh, that you can kind of see the details. So as you see here, um, I run 11 tests and all of them passed and I have no errors and I get build successful at the end. All right, so it looks pretty solid. Um, there should be no issues. Um, so as a homework, I suggest you do one extra thing. So there is a bug, actually. Even though I have 11 UI tests and I have three uh, greeting tests and the app is damn simple, I already found one bug in my app. Uh, <laughs> So if I, yeah, let me just launch the app. So actually, yes, so because I, I used automated tests, what happened is the system, oh, please quit. The system installed the app, ran the test, and then uninstalled it. Um, so I don't actually have it here. So I will use the uh, Android Studio to launch the app for me. And I will show you where the bug is. Um, it's a very simple um, bug, but uh, what I would like you to do is to write a test which fails because the app has this bug and then fix the bug such that the test passes. All right, that's the usual procedure. Um, oh, yeah, so I'm, I'm running the test instead of running the app. So I need to wait for this to finish. Um, So the bug is actually inside the greetings activity. Um, so let me, yeah, while it's doing it, let's go to the tests. Let's go to the greeting activity test and let's check what I'm testing there. So what I'm testing there is if I click the advanced button, 
I will get to the uh, advanced view, right? Um, so that works. If I click on the advanced button, I get to the uh, advanced view. And if I click on the simple button, I get back to the simple view. So that works as well. Um, if I click the cancel button, I will quit the activity, which works. And then if I, from the simple view, if I go to the advanced one, and then from the advanced, I go back to the simple one. And then from the simple one, I get back to the advanced one. Then I am in the advanced one and it works. All right. So the final test, um, yeah, let me demonstrate that. The final test passes. So if I greet myself, I go Joe. I will greet Joe. I'm in simple view. I'm clicking advanced. I'm in advanced. I'm clicking simple. I'm in simple. And I'm clicking advanced. I'm in an advanced. I, I am in advanced. So the final test works. And it's fine. It passes and the behavior is correct. So let me go back to this. Look, if I go to the greetings activity and from the simple view, I go to the advanced and I press the back button, what should happen? Well, I should get back to simple, which does, right? So that parts work. What will happen if I click to the advanced? I should get back to the advanced, but I don't, right? I'm clicking advanced and nothing happens. And that's the bug, right? So the bug is, I go from the simple to the advanced. From the advanced, I go back to the simple, but not by pressing the simple button, but by pressing the back button. And then suddenly the advanced stops working. Um, console, of course, works fine. And again, if I go to advanced, simple, advanced, simple, advanced, simple, that works fine. The back button from simple takes me back to the previous activity and the back button from advanced takes me back to simple, but advanced doesn't work. Why is that? If you know why, um, you can fix it. If you don't know why, try to write the test, which basically fails because that is not working in the app and you can clone the repo and you can play with it. So that's that's all for now. Uh, I hope it explained and uh, clarified some of the issues related to um, passing intents and passing parameters. Um, we did uh, pass it through the extras um, in the name question activity. Um, and yes, if you have any questions, ask me on Discord or make an issue in the issue tracker. If you know how to write the, this test, which we are missing, write it and make a pull request. And then if you know how to fix it, okay, fix it as well. And then the test will pass. Uh, but write the test first. Um, it should be quite easy to modify the existing, uh, existing test. Just add one extra. All right. So that's all. Thank you very much.